There are a ton of rumors floating around right now that there's an Ableton Push 3 coming in 2021 and that it will be a standalone device. The news is changing every day. Let's get into why I think the rumors are true, even though some are saying they're completely fake. What is going on everybody? My name is Tatro, your electronic music mentor. The news is changing every day, so I'm excited to be reporting on this, but just know that we're tracking information that's not official from the company, but based off of some leaks and some rumors. This all started with a photo posted to an Ableton Live Facebook group that allegedly shows Push 3, a standalone device, coming in 2021. Now the news just keeps changing on this and I'm tracking articles on synthanatomy.com. I'll link those articles down below. First, they detailed the link, but as recently as this morning, they have published an article saying that the rumors are completely fake. But from my perspective, there's a little catch to that. In the opening of the article, it actually states, according to media colleagues, Ableton has confirmed to them that they don't recognize it and they didn't release it, referring to the photo, the leaked photo. Now, if we had an official Ableton spokesperson or official Ableton Twitter speaking out saying, hey, the rumors are not true, I might be more likely to believe this. And I have no doubt that the author of this article has it on good authority that Ableton has said, you know, the rumors are fake. But I still think these rumors are true. I think there's an Ableton push standalone device in the pipeline. And I wanna give some context, a little bit of history so you can fully understand why I still think the rumors are true despite them being allegedly called fake. Let's start by talking about this device. The Akai APC40, the original Ableton Live controller. So before Push even existed, Akai created the APC40, which became the official Ableton controller. It's got the Ableton logo on it. You can find videos on it on the Ableton official YouTube channel. This was the beginning of what seemed to be a great partnership between Akai and Ableton Live, because after the APC40 was released, in 2012, Ableton and Akai collaborated again, this time on a flagship piece of hardware for Ableton specifically. This is now the Ableton Push 1. It's not called the Akai Push, it's called the Ableton Push. This is an Ableton controller, but it just so happens to be engineered by Akai, as it says right here on the device. This was a huge release when it happened. Previously, Ableton was strictly a software company, I believe, and this was their first dipping their toe in the water of hardware. The reason it works so well is because when you are the software company, you can develop hardware that works way better with the software than any other third party can. But this collaboration between Akai and Ableton was seemingly short-lived. Because about three years later, the Ableton Push 2 was released. And this was seemingly developed only by Ableton. Akai's name is nowhere to be found on this, no attribution, no reason to believe that anybody other than Ableton created this second iteration of the Push. The other interesting thing about this too was the iteration cycle. So Ableton Push 1 being announced in 2012, Push 2 coming in 2015, three years is a really short amount of time to iterate so quickly, and they made amazing improvements on the Push 2. I mean, the pads are way more sensitive, they added a full color screen. It was a huge upgrade to the point where they actually had a buyback program where you could trade in your Ableton Push 1 and get 30% off a of Push 2. Not only was that a really cool program to help folks who wanted to upgrade, but they also took those Ableton Push 1s and donated them to various nonprofits, which I actually benefited from when I worked in nonprofits, so that was really cool. Now, for one reason or another, Ableton split with Akai on the development of the Push and decided to go completely in-house. Now, it could be that for Push 1, Ableton being a software company, they really needed somebody who was used to making hardware to help them get their feet off the ground and create some hardware. But it could also be financial. You know, you don't want to split profits with another company, so you develop it yourself in-house. It could also be creative differences or just creative complication, right? If you have two teams, an Ableton team and an Akai team working on one product, you know, differences can arise. Communication problems can pop up, especially working between two companies. A whole host of reasons, and I don't want to speculate too much, but for one reason or another, Ableton went completely independent and now develops their own hardware. That's important to remember. This came out in 2015. All the while, Akai continued to release their own standalone devices. Now, Akai had always been releasing MPCs, like MPCs tale as old as time. They're the classic standalone beat making electronic music device. 
So they release things like the MPC Live, the MPC One. Now there's a second iteration of the MPC Live with a speaker on it. And they also released the Akai Force, which was this new standalone device that really, really looked like it could have been an Ableton standalone device had they still been working with Ableton. But nonetheless, it was supposed to hit a different market than the MPCs or else they wouldn't have released it. Had a massive screen, had a solid grid controller, looked really like a push standalone, but without the Ableton name. Enter into 2020 and we have just had the announcement of Native Instruments Machina Plus, a standalone Machina that has a ton built into it, more than I could have expected. Nine instruments, 35 effects, and thousands of sounds on board according to their website. It's got massive FM8, Monarch, a bunch of Machina kits built into it, more than we can expect from a lot of standalone devices. It's a powerhouse and the prices reflect that. The Akai Force debuted at about $14.99, now is retailing for about $9.99. The Machina Plus is debuting at $13.99, so it's right in the same ballpark. And I mentioned these other companies because what you have now is a market that is truly embracing standalone. And in my mind, Ableton being now both a software and a hardware company, it would be incredibly difficult to think that they were not developing their own standalone product. Not only that, but Push 2 released in 2015. That's five years ago. Now there was only a three year iteration process between Push 1 and Push 2, which we can understand. Go from 1.0 to 2.0, you learn a lot from that first experience and then you take a little more time for the 3.0. But it's been five years. I had hoped in the past that we would see a more portable version of the Push or Push Mini, um, but I feel like we would have seen that already. So. What does Ableton have up their sleeve? What could be taking so long? Like I said, it's been five years. Of course, they've been working on Ableton Live 10, but perhaps they're working on another hardware device that requires a bit more research and development. Something that goes a little bit further than just a integrated MIDI controller. Something like a standalone device. So this radio silence on hardware from Ableton, coupled with the market fully embracing standalone products, has me believing that the rumors about a Push 3 standalone device are true. Whether we end up seeing it or not, whether the project ends up just getting scrapped, that's up to the bigwigs at Ableton. But I think we'll see it one day, I think it's real, and the fact that we're in a pandemic is not helping. Ableton Loop, their annual conference, which was supposed to take place in Berlin this year, was canceled. They've already canceled Ableton Loop 2021, which would have been major events that they could have used to launch the Ableton Push 3, should it exist. And the pandemic is causing all sorts of supply chain issues, especially for products manufactured in China, where people have to get different parts for things, and even just shipping things to customers. A lot of companies are having issues with that now as well. So it could be that the image is real, but they've had to delay the release of Push 3 for a number of reasons. And it also could be that it's totally fake. But let's take a look at the image and just see what it shows us. It's got an SD card slot. It's got inputs and outputs. It's got USB ports, which are very common on the MPC devices, MIDI in, MIDI out, uh, and a power jack. Even the design of the image, I can fully believe that this would be an Ableton image. You know, you've got that green color, which they haven't really used much in the past. The stylistic nature of the 2021, you know, with the cross through the zero. Um, why is if somebody's faking a design? I don't really understand why they would take the time to make that design look nice. But I guess if they want to make it look really good and do a good fake, they would put some thought into this design actually. But what would we want to see in this device? For me, it's easy. You would want the Ableton synths that we all love, you know, stuff like operator and wavetable. I'd want simpler and sampler as well. And of course, Ableton's suite of audio effects. Like I said, I think they have the advantage being a software company the same way Native Instruments has the advantage being a software company and a hardware company. Being able to make a standalone device, it just makes so much sense. I see no reason that Ableton would not be following suit. But what do you think? Will we see a Push 3 standalone device in 2021? Let me know in a comment down below. Like I said, what I just outlined for you is just my belief, just looking at the market, looking at Ableton's history and what they've got. So sure, I believe it's true, but I have no connection to Ableton the company, so I could be completely wrong. And according to that Synth Anatomy article that quotes sources saying it's completely fake, it's fake, but I think it's real. And that's just my opinion. 
Let me know in a comment your opinion. Give this video a like if you enjoyed and don't forget to subscribe for more live electronic music performances, tutorials, and content to make you a more productive producer. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Tatro. Have a good one. Thank you.